Okay, in this video, I'm going to go through how to calculate or how to determine the empirical and molecular formulas, formulas for percent or from percent data for a chemical compound. And you can see in this day in this question, we've been given the percent composition. It says it was analyzed and found it contained 40% carbon, 6.71% hydrogen, and 53.29% oxygen. And we're also told that the molecular weight of the compound is 180.16 grams per mole. And they want to know what's the empirical and the molecular formulas for the compound. All right, so this is just like uh, we did previously with the mass data. Here we've been given the percent data. There's only one little trick you need to remember I think will help you out a lot, is if you just remember or you just assume that since we're given the percent data, we can just assume that our sample has a total mass. So we can assume that for our sample, the total mass is 100 grams. So I'm just going to put down here total mass, and if we assume that the total mass of our sample is 100 grams and 40% of it is carbon, then you should recognize that we have 40 grams of carbon. So in this case, for carbon, we have 40 grams. Now we can do the same thing for the rest of the elements. If we have hydrogen, we have our sample is 6.71% hydrogen, and it's a 100 gram sample, that means that for hydrogen, our sample must contain 6.71 grams of hydrogen. So we're going to write that down. Hydrogen, 6.71 grams. And we can do that finally for oxygen. If we have a 100 gram sample and 53.29% of it is oxygen, then that means we must have a total of 53.29 to nine grams of oxygen, okay? So that's a trick you need to remember, and I think that will help you out a lot, is if you're given a percent analysis, you're given percent composition, you can always assume that the sample, the total mass of the sample is 100 grams, and then you can convert directly from percents to grams like we did, okay? So in our previous examples, we said now that the chemical formula, as you know, represents the ratio of the number of atoms of each element. We have the mass data, so we need to convert our masses into moles using our molar masses. So we're going to do that first for each of these. For carbon, we know the molar mass of carbon, that one mole of carbon is 12 grams. Our grams cancel, and we know, therefore, that we have three 0.33 moles of carbon. All right, we can do the same thing for the hydrogen. We have to convert from grams to moles. We want to compare the number of atoms of each element for our chemical formula. So we know one mole of hydrogen is 1.01 grams. Once again, the grams cancel, and we find out that we have 6.64 moles of hydrogen, and we can finally we can do the same thing for oxygen, we convert the grams into moles, so one mole of oxygen is 16.00 grams, cancel, cancel, and we find out that we also have 3.33 moles of oxygen, okay? So the first thing we did was we assume we have a 100 gram sample, therefore we can convert our percents, for example 40% directly into grams, 40 grams, and then the second step really uh, after converting to grams, we're now going to convert to moles, and we can do that using the molar masses. So we know that our sample has 3.3 moles of carbon, 6.64 moles of hydrogen, and 3.33 moles of oxygen. Now we have to be able to compare these, and we want to find out the ratio of the number of moles of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. And the easiest way to do that is to simply divide each of the molar values by the smallest molar value. That will allow us to determine the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen. So 3.33 is the lowest value. So we're going to divide all of our molar value by the lowest value. The lowest value being 3.33, our moles cancel, and that's 1. We can do the same thing for oxygen. 
can divide by three, our lowest molar value. Moles cancel, and this is one mole also, excuse me, or one. We can do the same thing for our hydrogen. We're gonna divide by the smallest molar value, 3.33 moles. And in this case, we end up with just about two. Okay, so now we know that the ratio of carbon to hydrogen to oxygen is one to two to one. So that gives us our empirical formula. That's the lowest ratio. We have all whole numbers now. We don't need to convert anything from fractions into whole numbers. So now we can just write down our empirical formula. And we know that the empirical formula for our compound, EF, for empirical formula, is going to be C, C1, H2, O1. So that's the empirical formula. C, H2, O is the empirical formula for our compound. Now, we want to be able to get the molecular formula, and in order to get the molecular formula, we have to compare the molecular weight to the empirical formula weight. So I'm just going to put down here empirical weight. That stands for the empirical formula weight. The empirical formula weight, we can just calculate from our periodic table, find the molar mass or the molar, the empirical formula weight for CH2O. And if we do that, we know that the empirical weight, the empirical formula weight, for CH2O is 30 grams per mole, right? That's the weight of one carbon, two hydrogens, and one oxygen. Now we were given up here the molecular weight for the compound. The molecular weight is 180.16. So that means we're gonna write down 180.16 grams per mole. That's our molar weight. Our empirical formula weight is 30 grams per mole. Once again, our units cancel. And if we divide 180 by 30, we get six. Now, what does that six tell us? That six tells us that in our molecular formula, we have six empirical formula units. Okay, so that's the number of empirical formula units in our molecular formula, our empirical formula is CH2O, so we have to multiply, so to speak, our empirical formula by six. If we do that, we get C6H12 and O6. So that is our empirical formula. This is, excuse me, that's our molecular formula. This right here is our empirical formula. Our empirical formula is CH2O. We know that our molecular formula contains six empirical formula units. We know that because we compared the molecular weight to the empirical weight or the empirical formula weight. So therefore we have to multiply our empirical formula by six to get our molecular formula and our molecular formula therefore is C6H12O. All right, so that's how you do that. From percent data, you get your empirical formula first compare the molecular and the empirical weights, and then you can get your molecular formula. Okay, thank you very much. I hope that was hopeful. Thanks for watching.